Of all the animatronics throughout the Five Nights at Freddy's series, one of the strangest is no doubt Balloon Boy. Introduced as early as FNAF 2 and as a reoccurring staple character, Balloon Boy both fits right into the uncanny lineup of children's entertainment characters and stands out jarringly amongst his peers. Initially introduced as a harmless, statuesque figure playing naughty tricks on the night guard, Balloon Boy caught a reputation for being a menace, and soon was regarded as a maniacal figure by the community, or at least the gremlin of the group. Today we will be going through the full story of Balloon Boy from start to finish, and also covering his female counterparts JJ and DD along the way, and whoever else we stumble across. Balloon Boy's humble beginnings originated in FNAF 2, where he was introduced as one of the new toy animatronics and the first humanoid animatronic, unless you count the puppet. Balloon Boy is labeled as a balloon vendor and supposedly hands out balloons to children, though from his rigidness depicted in the game, you may mistake him as a plastic statue mounted beside the balloon stand. He carries a balloon in one hand, not a real balloon but a plastic sphere that resembles one, and a sign in the other that says, you know, balloons. BB was the first of another kind too, as the first animatronic who didn't directly attack the player. Instead of jump scaring, if allowed into the office unchecked, BB would disable the flashlight feature for a penalty. While that could easily lead to someone else jump scaring you, BB himself cannot do so. This is what began Balloon Boy's reputation of being a little spitball. That and one other key behavior. His voice, which was introduced in this game as well. Another big first unless you count the pirate song in FNAF 1 as being Foxy. Balloon Boy greets you with a Hello? Hi. Hi. And then hits you with a <laughs> That laugh itself became a staple of Five Nights at Freddy's. Or at least, the trademark of something about to hit the fan. Probably Foxy as he launches himself onto your desk because BB nicked your batteries. So, even with his first appearance, BB had already started to form a reputation. But he wasn't the only one of his kind in this game. There is an easter egg of a recolored BB with pink eyes. This is JJ, though I don't think she received her name until FNAF World. We see very little of her in FNAF 2, just having a brief blink and you'll miss it appearance under the table and nowhere else. All we know about JJ comes from later games, but this is technically her first appearance. We'll return to her later. Balloon Boy returns in FNAF 3 as Phantom Balloon Boy. Like the other Phantoms from the game, Phantom Chica, Freddy, Puppet, Foxy, Mangle, Phantom BB is a distraction more than an antagonist. If jump scared by him, your stats will tank and you will be left hazy and disoriented for a brief amount of time, possibly long enough for the real threat, Springtrap, to slide in. Balloon Boy doesn't really stand out amongst the Phantoms, admittedly. We also see Balloon Boy's empty head in a box of spare parts left over from the deconstructed toy animatronics, suggesting his fate following FNAF 2. Though, this isn't the end of Phoebe, far from it. In FNAF 4, we don't see Balloon Boy himself, but we do see a child who vaguely resembles him. We never get the name of this kid, but here's what he says. Are you going to the party? Everyone is going to the party. Oh, wait. You have to go. It's your birthday. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely gives off Balloon Boy vibes. Unfortunately, that is not the only Balloon Boy adjacent creature that appears in FNAF 4. For in the Halloween update, we are introduced to a nightmare variant of Balloon Boy. And dear heavens, it's bad. If Balloon Boy was a cutesy menace, Nightmare Balloon Boy is a sleep paralysis demon pretending to be a child and failing badly. There is nothing cute nor innocent about his antics. Nightmare Balloon Boy is a stout creature with boggled red eyes, long crooked fingers, and an enormous mouth underneath a flip-top head. In its blue gums sit two circular rows of sharp teeth, looking more fitting for juicing oranges than biting anything. Not to say he won't bite, and he very much will. Unlike BB, who's mischievous at worst, Nightmare BB is a real threat. Taking the place of Plush Trap in the Fun with Plush Trap minigame, Nightmare Balloon Boy parks his round plastic backside in a wooden chair at the end of a hallway for about two seconds, then he's off, dipping in between the doors and inching closer, and you have to shine a light on him to get him to stop on the X on the floor. Succeed and you will get a boost through the beginning of the next night. Fail and you get a jump scare. You are not required to beat Nightmare Balloon Boy to continue, but spiting him should be your main goal here. Thankfully, that is the full extent of Nightmare Balloon Boy's influence on FNAF 4. Now on to FNAF World. Balloon Boy is a playable character, as is JJ. 
In fact, this is where JJ gets her name and a proper design and introduction. In fact, in the Foxy Fighter spin-off minigame, a parody of Star Fox, JJ is given a voice. Let's kick this party into high gear! Though this voice clearly isn't a perfect representation of what you would expect from the character. On the gameplay side of things, BB and JJ are lower tier characters. They're both better than the ones you start with, but not as good as those picked up later on. Phantom Balloon Boy is also playable and is on a stronger tier with Toxic-centric moves. Another playable character would be Nightmare Balloon Boy, who also returns. He is in fact the strongest version of Balloon Boy that you can play as in this game. There is an enemy known as Ball Boy, who greatly resembles Balloon Boy, except with thick brown hair and juggling balls instead of carrying a balloon. There's also a boss known as Brow Boy, who is a big Balloon Boy variant with a thick unibrow. This is also where we are introduced to Dee Dee, a JJ recolor who runs a minigame where you can fish for valuable pearls. At this point, Dee Dee is little more than another JJ, but she will become important later on. For now, that pretty much covers BB's inclusion in FNAF World. Let's move on. There is something worth noting in Sister Location, but I'm going to bring it up in a later section, so let's just move on to Balloon Boy's next major appearance, Ultimate Custom Night. With many of the established animatronics returning for Ultimate Custom Night, it is no wonder that Balloon Boy 2 pops back up, and he's back to his old tricks. Balloon Boy will sneak into the side vent, and you have to close the door on him to drive him back. Elsewise, he'll bar your flashlight from working for a while, and his laugh will disturb any noise-sensitive animatronics. Either of these can end your run on an especially packed night, but BB himself won't. No jump scare and no new voice lines. JJ works virtually identically to BB. She sidles into the side vent, and you have to keep her out. When she gets in, though, she disables the doors for about 10 seconds. This makes her just as dangerous as BB, though equally unable to jump scare. Nightmare Balloon Boy also returns, unfortunately, and he plays differently than BB and JJ. Like characters such as Rockstar Freddy and Scrap Baby, Nightmare Balloon Boy is stationed in the office and, very much like Scrap Baby, you have to keep an eye on him to see when he moves. If he's sitting up, you have to shine the light on him to get him to go dormant again. However, if he is not sitting up and you shine the light on him accidentally, he will immediately jump scare you. Unlike BB and JJ, Nightmare Balloon Boy is given a full set of voice lines to accompany his jump scares. Here's a few of his lines. Come closer. Help me count my teeth. <laughs> You're not so big. Just a butt-sized morsel. <laughs> there just isn't room in here for both of us. <laughs> These lines depict Nightmare Balloon Boy as being just as malicious and dangerous as he appears to be. He's rotten to the core, this one. Fun fact, Nightmare Balloon Boy is voiced by Matthew Curtis, the voice of Music Man and Burn Trap before his lines were cut. Just thought that might be an interesting little tidbit to throw in. The final balloon persona from Ultimate Custom Night is a return of Dee Dee, having made it from FNAF World and becoming a more established character. But Dee Dee isn't one of the attacking animatronics, oh no. She is something much more insidious. Uh oh, how unfortunate. Uh oh, how unfortunate. I know how much you like to fight, so I'll add a new problem to your night. And with that, a random animatronic was suddenly dragged into your night, and you better figure out who it was fast, or you're in serious trouble. That's the joy of Dee Dee, reeling in animatronics out of the depths of the Red Lake, right under the nose of the one old man consequences, and dumping them almost directly into your lap. She is that much of a hassle, and the only way to keep her from showing up is to waste a boost keeping her out for the night. The biggest irritation with Dee Dee is that if you want to play on a specific layout of animatronics, and you put their points too high with too few animatronics, she will be triggered you will be forced to fight against another random animatronic. That doesn't sound like a big deal, but let's say you wanted to play an all-foxy night for some reason. It's likely Dee Dee's going to appear if they're any higher than a few points, and I feel like the inability to shut her off dampens the game experience. She should have a toggle like the others, being required to beat 50-20, but not needed 24-7. A much more vicious version of Dee Dee named Xor, X-O-R, 
appears if you play the 50-20 mode. When she appears, she summons the secret animatronics that can only be randomly and rarely summoned by Dee Dee normally. Then she's gone, so that's sort of it. Ultimate Custom Night pretty much went out of its way to assure us that it's not just Balloon Boy, all of the balloon creatures have their dark sides, some more annoying than anything, but none as innocent as they look. Moving on to Help Wanted, Balloon Boy reappears in the remake of FNAF 2, where we can finally see that he is not just a statue, but is fully capable of moving and running. Which is sort of terrifying, but again, Balloon Boy is more annoying than aggressive. Balloon Boy appears in a slew of cameos throughout the game as well. Phantom Balloon Boy in the FNAF 3 remake, as a mask the plush babies will wear, in the trick-or-treat level, as an action figure, Balloon Boy gets a healthy amount of representation in this game but nothing to the degree of his next appearance. FNAF AR Special Delivery Balloon Boy was one of the initial animatronics released with FNAF AR, the first toy animatronic, the first of very few small animatronics, and with three skins, more than even Freddy Fazbear himself. Balloon Boy circles you huffing and puffing on a balloon, making these unsettling gasping noises and the replace of the typical thumping noises of the animatronics. He mock charges, he haywires, he acts like a typical animatronic, and then runs at you, but the difference is that Balloon Boy is shorter and thus can maybe skirt under your view and get to you before you can shock him. Unlike many of the other animatronics, Balloon Boy doesn't get new voice lines, but he does get new sound effects, such as the huffing and puffing and this irritated noise. <laughs> Balloon Boy also gets three skins. First, we have Swamp Balloon Boy. Featured in the Haunted Forest event, this BB looks like something you almost stepped on wading through a flooded ditch in the middle of the woods. Thick with dirt and moss, with unsettlingly empty eye holes, and holding a sign that reads, Rot. Second is Frostbite Balloon Boy. Thick with snow and with a menacing grin of jagged ice teeth, his balloon now covered in frost to more resemble a club than anything else, and carrying a sign that reads, Avalanche. I find Swamp and Frostbite Balloon Boy to be actually really great skins. Instead of being simple recolors, they have new textures and details, and their altered faces emphasize the creepiness that normal Balloon Boy just doesn't get. Swamp Boy's empty face and Frostbite Boy's twisted grin. The last is Jetpack Balloon Boy. He looks pretty neat, steampunkish. Not as scary, but is a pretty clever use of the skin, so I would also consider it good. Balloon Boy's most recent appearance was in Security Breach, but not as an animatronic, as a character in an arcade minigame. Before I forget, BB also appeared in BB's Air Adventure in FNAF 3, which is a relatively cut and dry, these animatronics are haunted and trapped minigame. In Security Breach, BB features as the playable character in Balloon World, one of the only arcade games that made it into the final product and arguably the hardest secret to find in the game. Involving getting the Faz cam and snapping pictures of cutouts to get into the daycare attendant's secret room, and then finding the arcade game itself, which features both him and Balloon Boy. It sort of plays like Flappy Bird, where you steer Balloon Boy around, dodge birds, bats, and walls, and collect balloons for extra lives. It's rather simple. Though if you go into a glitch, the world will shift, the sun will become eclipsed, and you will have to follow a line of glitch before Balloon Boy winds up floating in the center of the Eclipse's massive face. It says, good night, and then the minigame abruptly ends. If there is a connection between Balloon Boy and the daycare attendant, then it isn't elaborated on beyond this minigame. And there's no indication that BB was a cut animatronic from the game either. So what this minigame means in the grand scheme of things is unclear. Though it could very well be, these animatronics are haunted and trapped. Now, with that, we come to the end of Balloon Boy's run, but before we move fully onto the books, I want to mention that thing I held over from Sister Location. This is kind of weird. In Sister Location, there's two little characters featured in the Circus Gallery control room who are never named and are just toys that don't do anything. They are a little magician fellow who sort of looks like Balloon Boy, and a much more Balloon Boy-esque puppet named Little Joe. Little Joe doesn't get his name or anything in the game, but he does reappear in Pizzeria Simulator as a mascot for the candy company known as Lally's Lollies. Little Joe looks especially like BB in these ads, but doesn't physically appear. 
Now here's the weird part. In Tales of the Pizzaplex, in one of those someone didn't read up before they wrote up decisions, there's a story called Lally's Game about a humanoid toy who plays a deadly version of hide and seek. Maybe the story also leaves it ambiguous to if the main character is just a killer and doesn't realize it. A real Harvey the Rabbit situation. But that's not the confusing part. The doll is like described as gray and featureless and is drawn to look surprisingly close to that description on the cover. Uh, Fazbear Frights and Tales of the Pizzaplex covers are hilariously inaccurate at times, but in this case, it actually is. And it is named Lally. Not only does it look nothing like Little Joe of Lally's Lollies, but the doll mascot of Lally's Lollies is Little Joe, not a character known as Lally. There is no character known as Lally. So, why the name? Well, I think there might have been a mistake here, a sort of lost in translation thing where they again tried to use a name to reference something in FNAF, except this time someone forgot that the mascot of Lally's Lollies isn't actually a character named Lally, but instead Little Joe. And that's the story of Little Joe, the forgotten Balloon Boy variant. Moving on to the books proper, Balloon Boy only has a couple of appearances that I can think of. In the Twisted Ones, Charlie sees an illusion of a child, which then turns into a flood of dozens of Balloon Boys, an absolutely terrifying sight to behold. But it's not real. They are illusions created by the illusion discs, and when she sees them, they make her dizzy and they make her sick, and it's just, it's all fake. Except, they actually are real. They turn out to be real animatronics and are summoned again later in the book before being taken out by Freddy, who I guess just falls on them. So, a weird cameo from an equally weird book. The only other story that Balloon Boy appears in is Sergio's Lucky Day, in the form of Lucky Boy, a small doll that looks like Balloon Boy. The main character, Sergio, finds Lucky Boy in a dump, a rather popular place to find animatronics apparently, and starts taking his advice. Lucky Boy gives vague hints that lead Sergio to winning the lottery, buying a new car, and totally revamping his life. Until he wants to win a woman over for at a high school reunion, and Lucky Boy rather abruptly and vaguely suggests that he doesn't need ears, to which Sergio proceeds to cut off his ears, cheeks, lips, stomach, pretty much totally disfiguring himself without needing much convincing. He then shows up at his reunion, scares everyone half to death, and though not specified in the story, likely dies shortly afterwards. This is a weird story because the big punch line kind of feels like it comes out of nowhere. I get that the main issue and theme of the story is Sergio's unhealthy obsession with Lucky Boy, how he's becoming reliant on him for all his major decisions that he doesn't even feel the need to think for himself anymore. But Lucky Boy's rather abrupt transition from ominous but helpful to cut your face off is so abrupt that you could almost tell where the writer realized, oh wait, we have to get into the climax now, hold on. I feel like a better payoff would have been that Lucky Boy does give good advice and that Sergio is just so lost in his own head that he's taking his advice more and more literally. Like, Lucky Boy says, home is where the heart is. So Sergio takes this as a suggestion to buy a house and these vague lines do sound like they could mean something, so you understand why he's believing it. But then, when it gets to the insanity at the end, the scary part isn't Lucky Boy just telling him to carve himself, which is predictable, but that Sergio is so far gone that he assumes the Lucky's, you don't need them, is about his fault and not towards the various women or vices that Sergio chases searching for purpose. Of course, all of this, both sides of the coin, all of these are reoccurring tropes. You see them in Twilight Zone, you see them in Goosebumps again. So it's not exactly like this is a fresh idea either, but I digress. One more note that I would like to make on the books before we move on, and this one involves something a little different. So a while back I did a video on the character encyclopedia, and one on Helpy, and in the Helpy video I discussed how the character encyclopedia depicted him as an untrustworthy little cretin out to get you. How he's supposed to be cute, but is instead creepy, and heavily hinting that Helpy is not to be trusted. As you likely know, that is an extremely inaccurate depiction of Helpy. In fact, that couldn't be further from what Helpy is. Now, that page sums up Balloon Boy dead on. 
Balloon Boy's own page from what I've seen of it, just a little clip, is especially tame. But this page parody all but parrots the feelings of a portion of the community when it comes to Balloon Boy, not Helpy. With that, it looks like we're at the end of our Balloon Boy journey, rather abruptly, my apologies. And JJ, Dee Dee, Little Joe, and Sergio, and whatever other balloon gremlins might crawl out of the depths at a later date. But all these cracks about Balloon Boy, what do I really think of him? I think that Balloon Boy manages to straddle the line between cute and creepy very well. I think the fact that he does look so child-friendly, unlike some of the more overtly creepy animatronics, makes him stick to the theme of pizza mascot gone wrong a lot better than some of the others. His consistent behavior of being a menace over being a monster, save this from FAR inclusion, gives him a unique characterization that allows him to stand out despite the fact that he himself hasn't gotten additional lines or building on his character really since FNAF 2. And long before many of the other characters got additional characterization. Everybody hates Balloon Boy, but in a way where it swings around and you can't help but actually love him, or at least acknowledge that he has somewhat made himself a staple of FNAF. Will he be back? Oh yeah, no doubt about it. But only time will tell what he'll be getting himself into next time. But until then, thank you for watching.